All right, YouTube, I know you guys have wanted me to do these particular reviews for a really long time. I've put them off. The reason I put these off is because I'm about to do some really expensive brands and I wanted to make sure that I have in the arsenal of my memory a bunch of products that I'll be able to compare these to, both in terms of cost and effectiveness because these are such hyped brands. So the first brand I'm going to be doing is Sunday Riley, and then I'm going to follow with Drunk Elephant. This will be part one of that. This is going to be two weeks dedicated to using Sunday Riley products. I don't think Sunday Riley really needs much of an introduction. Everybody's heard of them. Everybody knows they sell really expensive skincare, and also that a lot of people on YouTube have been recommending them. So I'm gonna go through, I've got six products to test. I've got sample sizes, apparently I need to give a disclaimer of that. I'm so sorry YouTube, but at this point I'm just not going to be buying full sizes or investing a lot in this brand until I've at least tried them. And just so you guys know where I got these samples, these were mostly samples with a $25 purchase at Sephora. So that was still six $25 purchases in order to collect all of this. This, this trial is already expensive. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm going to be using. I do have two of the Sunday Riley Good Jeans samples for seven days, so I'm going to test that out. This will be a two-week trial as always. Then I have the UFO Ultra Clarifying Acne Treatment Facial Oil. This is actually the reason I'm doing Sunday Riley before Drunk Elephant. Um, because I have a feeling that based off of the treatment approach of Sunday Riley, this will help me to clear up this acne a little better than Drunk Elephant, which seems to focus more on healing. So that's that's what I'm gonna that's how I've decided to format this. I'm gonna give the UFO a go. I've got a serum, their CEO serum, which is a 15% vitamin C serum. I've got two moisturizers for some reason, not sure yet what they do. Uh, this is the title, and then I also have the CEO. Uh, as I go into these trials, I don't know a lot about the product. That's how I like to do it. I like to be a little blind and then learn about the product afterwards. And then this is the first time I've ever done this. Please don't hold this against me too much. This is a sample of the Ceramic Slip Clay Cleanser. I got this one in store. I would normally never do this, nor would I recommend doing this with products like serums and moisturizers where you don't know how long they sit out. Uh, but this being a cleanser, I'm okay with the concept of trying it out, also because it is a, I believe this was a $48 cleanser. We're just going to try it, see if I think it's okay. Maybe I'll end up buying full sizes of this brand, I have no idea, but I gotta try it first. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these products exclusively for two weeks, and then I will report back on Sunday Riley. I'm going to title this video in a way to be as transparent as possible about the fact that I did not love this brand. Now please understand that I don't hate this brand, I didn't hate the products, I actually thought one of the products I tried was quite phenomenal, and I kind of got the sense that a lot of these products were riding on its coattails, but I do think that what had happened to me is I, as I mentioned in the intro, I had built up a whole lot of expectation about this brand. I knew that it was really expensive, I knew that people were loving it, and I had really convinced myself that this was going to be the type of brand that I stood by. Now a lot of you probably already know this, I try really hard to remove my biases from any type of review that I film. So for me, this is actually a couple of days after I should have filmed this review. I waited intentionally because on the day I woke up to film this video, I had the worst breakout I'd had in a while, and I just didn't feel it would be fair to the brand or to you for me to come on camera feeling pretty upset about how I looked. It's starting to clear up. If you are at all interested in seeing that, that will be the intro to Drug Elephant, which I'm already on at this point. Um, but I do feel like I'm ready to come on camera now and talk to you guys about this brand. I feel like I had a couple of clues going into this that the trial might not go quite as exceptionally well as I wanted it to. Uh, one component of this being that I found out there's a little bit of controversy in Sephora reviews. There's a lot of speculation that if you leave a negative review, it will get deleted off the Sephora site for a Sunday Riley product. Uh, which initially I didn't believe, but I did try to backtrack and find a negative review that I'd seen a few days ago, and I couldn't find it. So that is kind of weighing a little bit on my opinion. I'm not sure why Sephora would delete negative reviews, that does kind of bother me. 
Um, I also happen to notice that, you know, I always do my price breakdowns. This was actually the most expensive skincare trial that I've done in terms of ratios. Add to that the fact that I figured out Beautypedia really has some harsh words on this brand. Most of their products are rated around two stars on the Beautypedia site. And I did happen to notice that there's a lot more of a middle ground of reviews if you look at Beautypedia or if you look at Makeup Alley than if you go on the Sephora website. It's all a little bit fishy. It's a little bit fishy. I do want to say, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I do want to say I absolutely completely understand if you happen to be a person who stands by this brand. I really do think it has an audience. I really do. What the the great the great pro of this brand is how easily they tie together all of their products. They tell you on the back of the box exactly what works with the product, exactly how to use it, and I think that's extremely helpful. But I can't say I would ever recommend this brand for somebody on a budget, it's just way too expensive. Nor would I recommend this for anybody with sensitive skin. I really found the products to be very harsh. So before I jump into the reviews, I will tell you guys how I did this, this trial. I did it a little bit differently from how I usually do. Because the brand tells you what products to use together, I decided to go with that and I focused in on using Good Jeans and uh, Tidal together for the first week and then I focused in on the CEO products for the second week. I did switch it up so that I was using everything for the duration of the two weeks, but I kind of made it just more of a focus. Being that I was testing a separate serum and a separate moisturizer, I really wanted to be able to observe what the effects were of each one of those. Because I know this question is going to come up, I did not test Luna because I could not get a sample of it and I did not want to invest in a full-size product. For me, I looked at it and I felt like it was a retinol in an oil. And to me, I can access a $5 retinol. I talked about that when the PTR retinol that I purchased. For me, I just can't justify spending a whole lot of extra money when I found a product that works so well for me. If I want an oil, I can add it on top. This is my opinion. I haven't tried it, so please know that I'm not reviewing it. I'm just telling you why I didn't try it. All right, let's jump into the reviews. I've got a list of notes for you guys. <laughs> Uh, and I want to start by telling you that the Sunday Riley brand does have their own kind of exclusive formula that they put into their products. I do think that it is a big part of the draw. I'll get to that more when we, when we talk about good jeans. Um, I was, however, surprised that this brand uses fragrance and dyes. I'm really surprised by that because this is the kind of brand that likes to emphasize their natural components and to be completely, completely honest with you guys, when I looked at the ingredients, I just did not feel like this was the most natural brand. And again, I'll talk more on that when I get to good jeans. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this based off of my favorite product to my least favorite product. And the reason I'm doing that is so hopefully you guys don't click away from me if I start getting too sassy about products. Um, but let's start with good jeans because you know what? Good jeans is, it's a really good formula. It's a really good formula. So it's AHAs, um, it's 50% lactic acid, which is a pretty high amount of lactic acid. For, I felt like this delivers really, really fast results. Basically, you can apply this and see a change in your skin in 10 minutes, which I think is phenomenal. I think that with skincare, you really usually have to wait a long time in order to see any results, and I think that's part of the... Um, huge appeal of this product. It's hard to find a product that does that. Um, I will say that objectively speaking, I could not find a reason for the price tag to be as high on this product as it is. Just for some perspective, this little tiny packet that I'm holding up is a $7 value. This is an expensive product. Um, I do think that there's something going on in this product that sets it apart. I think a lot of people have tried to dupe it, and you can't, and I don't really know what it is. But objectively looking at it, you can find inexpensive lactic acid and recreate your own serum. You, you should be able to. But there is something special about this. There really is. Now, I also happen to notice that this says on it that you can use it daily. I tried to use it daily. I tried to use it twice daily. I realized that for me, I had to cut back. I couldn't use it daily. It was too much on my skin. Again, why I'm saying Probably not the best brand for sensitive skin. However, this would be great even if you do have sensitive skin as a occasional type of treatment. You get more for your money that way. I just found that even though they say you can use it daily, I think that's a, I think that's a bit much. Now you guys know I like to look at my reviews. So something that I happened to observe when I was reading reviews, 
is that I saw a lot of people saying this was the best product that they'd ever used on their skin. And again, I'm telling you, I understand why those fast results really do speak for themselves. But other people did say that this caused them to break out. And something I happen to observe is that everybody who said this product broke them out. When they mentioned the other products they had been using, they were significantly more gentle and did not contain any types of ingredients that would cause purging. Again, I'm gonna direct you guys to my purging versus breakouts video, which will be in the description box. I actually ended up filming that because I knew I'd need it for this particular video. And here's where things got a little sketchy for me. When I went and looked at the ingredients list, Sunday Riley likes to tell you that they don't have any parabens, any sulfates, that's all great great that's definitely going to attract the people who are interested in natural products but this product contains dmdm hydantoin which is a formaldehyde releaser and i i'm i'm not sure how you can sell a product containing a formaldehyde releaser and still categorize it as natural i have very mixed feelings on it i don't think it necessarily has to be the worst ingredient you've ever used but i think it's worth mentioning because as a brand that sells themselves as so natural why is that in there I want to talk about Tidal next. I actually did like Tidal. Uh, this is a moisturizer that contains enzymes, and I think a big part of why I like this is because I do like enzymes. I think they make a big difference in my skin. I don't think this was ridiculously priced. It's around $65 for 1.7 ounces, which is pretty, pretty typical. It does have hyaluronic acid in it. I think that for me, I like this for pretty much the same reason I like any enzyme product. It has a bit of a smell to it that's worth mentioning. I think if you are looking for good scented skincare, you're probably not going to like this. It kind of smells like grass to me, which isn't terribly offensive, but something that I think is worth mentioning. Uh, however, I really do think that it, I do think it's a good product. I might keep an eye out for this particular product. I liked it. I don't want to spend too much time on the ceramic slip cleanser because I don't really feel like I thoroughly tested it. I got about four uses out of it. I liked it. I think its price tag is a little high. Basically what it is, is an oil and clay cleanser. The clay is going to draw out any impurities in your skin, and the oil is going to make you feel like it didn't strip your skin, but for my personal opinion, I think that you can get the exact same thing out of a harsh cleanser followed with oil. And I think that is the kind of experience that is the reason why when I try these hyped brands, like in my hype skincare trial, I'm kind of seeing through what they're doing that's making it so I can't really justify the price tag. However, I do think a lot of people will like this product and as always, if you can afford it, that's great. It's not a bad cleanser. It does contain some irritants, which is worth mentioning. You don't want to get this product in your eyes. But overall, I would say it's a good cleanser with a high price tag. Moving on to the CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. This is a 15% vitamin C serum. It does contain a stable form of vitamin C, which is nice. However, I really got to agree with Beauty PD on this one. This is severely lacking in other ingredients, and that's my problem with this. I don't hate it. A lot of people do hate it because it does cause purging. I think that's what was going on with my skin. Uh, but I don't hate it. I just think, why is this solely vitamin C for its price tag. So basically, what I get from this product is that this is kind of a layering product in the same sense as the Ordinary serums, except it's eight times the cost of the Ordinary, and I just could never justify it for that reason. It's just way too expensive. All the negative reviews for this are definitely from people who had it break them out, and again, I direct you to my purging versus breakouts video. I don't think this product breaks you out. If you Even if you look at my upcoming Drunk Elephant review or my face right now, you'll see that I did not break out in areas aside from where I always break out. I think this product caused me to purge and purge a pretty large amount given it's 15% vitamin C. Um, but I don't hate it for that. I just think it's lacking. And then for the CEO Moisturizer, this also contains that same form of vitamin C, which is stable, which is nice. I think my deal with this product is this is so highly fragranced. This just, I, I finished this off, but you could still smell it in the container. It's not even a, a, an artificial fragrance. It is orange oil that's causing this fragrance, but I don't think that it helped the breakouts that I was having to be any more comfortable. If that makes sense, I think that it did slightly irritate my skin. When you, when you see that video, Maybe you can even still see it. 
this is a pretty bad breakout in the sense that it's not just little whiteheads here and there. My skin was very obviously irritated, and I really think that it was this product. This does not have good reviews outside of Sephora. In fact, that's where I saw a bad review that disappeared. I don't think this is a very good product at all. I think it's highly irritating, and I just, I cannot recommend this. Believe it or not, the product I disliked the most is this UFO oil. So what this is supposed to do is to prevent and manage acne by being a 1.5% salicylic acid formula. My favorite thing to do with this product is to smudge it on my face and pretend I'm an alien that just got sliced. Because that to me is about how useful this product is. I'm sorry, that was a bit snarky of me. I just don't like this product at all. I don't understand why it has green dye in it. To me, green dye is just taking up ingredient space in a product that's so expensive that it could have something better. It's supposed to be a dry oil, but I did not find it dry. It sits on your skin in a very thick way. I guess this might work if you have the form of acne that is caused by your skin being too dry, meaning that if your skin is overproducing oil because it's not getting enough oil on its surface. I think this could work for that type of a person. That, however, is not my issue. My issue is hormonal acne, and for me, I cannot find any reason in the world to spend this much on a 1.5% salicylic acid formula. You can get that from any drugstore, and to me, it actually works better than this really expensive oil. Another comment that I have about this UFO oil was actually pointed out by Beautypedia. So, the reason that a, sil a salicylic acid works on your skin is by it being correctly pH balanced. You can never actually test the pH level of a product that is suspended in oil. You can only test it if it's suspended in water. So there's no way of really knowing if this product is effective. And I think that is the bottom line of my issue with it. I didn't find it to prevent acne in any kind of way, nor did it treat it. If anything, it irritated my skin just as much as the CEO, CEO moisturizer, but unlike that one, which actually kind of is what it claims to be, for me, this just, this just did absolutely nothing. To me, this is a really expensive waste of money. I'm sorry to say it, I know some people love it. Again, again, if you're overproducing oil because you have dry skin, this may work for you, but so would any oil. Okay guys, so that's everything I tested. I know that two weeks is not a long time. I know somebody's gonna bring this up. But I'm gonna be real with you. If I had bought these products in their full sizes, I would be returning them. This would not be a trial I would be pushing because I really did see my skin getting irritated and not loving this brand. So even if I was trying to test this for longer, I wouldn't. I would, I would return it and get my money. It didn't work out for me. Again, I respect anybody who this brand does work for, and please know I'm not attacking you. That's great. Again, that's great that you loved your that you love your products. This brand just didn't do it for me. It didn't. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this relatively negative review. I hope you somehow enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like. It will get dislikes. <laughs> and thanks so much for watching. If you guys are interested, make sure you hit subscribe. I will be reviewing Drunk Elephant in a week and a half. My opinion on that one might be significantly better, just as a little heads up. So definitely hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace out.